Hi everyone, welcome to my channel where I share crochet patterns, finished pieces, and project inspiration. Today I'm excited to share with you a new vest I made that was inspired by a dog sweater I made for Coles, my dog. The vest uses v-stitches and multiple colors that really adds a lot of texture and style. I'm going to show you how I went about making this cozy and stylish vest. I hope you enjoy this video and find some inspiration. And if you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now on to the video. This is the story of how my dog Colas and I ended up wearing matching crochet vests that I made myself. It all started in December when the weather turned colder and I needed to find a new sweater for Colas to wear on our daily walks. Unfortunately, the doggy jacket she had was staticky and uncomfortable and she hated wearing it. I tried using static dryer sheets to fix the issue, but nothing worked. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and create a sweater for her myself. The thought of making a piece of clothing for my furry friend was a little intimidating at first, and making something for a body that wasn't mine seemed like a bit of a challenge. But I was determined to try it out, especially after realizing that all the dog coats and sweaters we found were designed for smaller dogs. So I grabbed my measuring tape and measured Colas with love and care while she sat nicely. I tried doing this in the past, but Colas always ended up running away to play with her toys. The measurements weren't perfect, but I was able to crochet along. However, when I got to her middle and chest neck area, I struggled a little. The neck opening was too big and the length was too long, but I refused to give up and I came up with a solution to make it work. I added a fabric liner to prevent static and made an underbelly closure with elastic and buttons to allow movement and flexibility. When I finally completed the sweater, Colas looked so adorable in it that I couldn't help but feel a surge of emotion and a sense of accomplishment. It was a tangible proof of something I made, and I felt proud of myself for making something beautiful and functional for my furry friend. She loved her new sweater and wore it proudly on our daily walks. As a result of this success, I got inspired to make myself a matching vest. I wanted something simple and oversized, so I began crocheting the ribbed bottom and shaping the armholes. However, things didn't quite turn out the way I imagined. When I tried on the vest, I realized it was too oversized and the armhole shaping was off, giving it an unflattering baggy look. Although the vest didn't turn out as planned, I learned that not every project needs to be perfect and that it's okay to make mistakes along the way. The love and care I put into the process of making something for Colas and myself made for a heartwarming experience. From the ups and downs of creating something new to the joy of seeing Colas wear her new sweater, the journey was full of warmth, love, and positivity. So it was with this kind of motivation and positivity that I went back to the drawing board, aka I frogged the vest down to the ribbing and started again. This time I took out several rows from the ribbing to make it smaller and when it came time to shape the armholes, I made sure to start the shaping a little closer to the edge. In the revised version, I also made decreases along the neckline edges only, whereas before I had decreased along the neckline and armhole edges, making the armholes even larger. The vest took less time to make the second time around, now that it was a smaller size, and now that I knew what the heck I was doing, and over the span of a weekend, I managed to finish the whole thing. I am so happy with the results and even happier that Colas and I have matching tops. A crochet story with a happy and educational ending. If you want to make your own vest, I've documented the steps over on my blog at popstamilk.com. I've included notes on sizing, the yarn I used, and of course, how to crochet the V-stitch. If you have questions about the pattern and the stitch I used, feel free to leave me a comment below. I did quite a bit of pattern filming during this first draft of the vest, which isn't completely usable now, but I'm sure I can repurpose some footage to show the V-stitch steps, so let me know if you want to see that. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and found some inspiration for your next crochet project. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share, comment, and subscribe to get more videos like this. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.